Hello, I'm Dinis Demir. Them briefly, right? Then they will come along there. Okay. How far are you? Let's see you. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good day. Good morning. I know we all having a good day, right? Yes, yeah, great day. Let's let's keep that. So, I'm Francis Momo, and I'll I'll be doing the historic walking tour of Freetown. So, I'll just give you. A Brief a synoptic history of Freetown while we hear how this place became Freetown, but we'll talk a little bit as well prior to what we know as Freetown today. And then from there, you go inside the museum, you see some elements of the museum detailing from pre colonial, colonial era, and post colonial, right? It's in the museum. But basically, we all always ask Freetown, 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 even the name speaks to a lot of our uh, consciousness, a lot of how our uh, black people came on the continent. First of all, it is very important for us to know that Freetown was the first space on the continent that enslaved Africans became free and returned to. So as early as 1787, this space was designated by the British to bring Africans after the transatlantic slave trade. And that was not even that was even before the Abolition Act in 1807. So so you you had this space 1787 before even you have what you know today as Liberia becoming the first black republic on the continent. Right, so, and how did this space become Freetown? Before, before the Abolition Act, there was, this, there was this dark epoch in our history as black people, right? Which we all know as the transatlantic slave trade. Or most times historians will say it was the triangular trade. Right? That is taking people first on this side, took them through the middle passage, which is the transoceanic migration of black people, and then ending into the new world and different spaces that you call the wider Atlantic. So that's why you see today that you have a whole lot of Afro diaspora production across North America and across other spaces around the world because there was a time that you had Europeans coming into Africa. In pre-colonial time, it was coming to see black people, black people open their arms, black people having their creative mentality, they exchange those creative mentalities, and at the end of the day, those relationships as well change, or what we call evolve, and then evolve into a painful history. Right, so just see the level of change of that relationship prior to colonialism or prior to European presence on the continent, right, or the west coast of Africa. So they took a lot of people from this location to other spaces. So, so for instance, if, 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 if we're trying to talk about even how black people went into Spaces like in the Caribbean now that you call Barbados, which is one of the biggest of uh, economies at the time with sugar plantation, right? He even had Africans first enslaved on this continent, places like Cape Verde, where they started doing sugar stuff or experimenting before even he went to the Caribbean, right? So, 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 so that's that's that that that's a. That's, a, that, that's also a horrendous play, uh, 
uh, infamous activity that happened on the, on, our, uh, on on black people before you had that that movement. But we all know there's a time in the history of black people that you had abolitions, right? People were talking about now. Let's try to end the transatlantic slave trade. So before you had what you call as the Abolitions Act in 1807. There are different cases that happen in British history that has to do with black people as well, right? So, for instance, if we look at the Jonathan Strong case in, 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 in the 1760s, and also the Somerset case, James Somerset case in 1771, 1772, uh, Granville Sharp had to provide legal advice or legal support to one slave that, that they wanted to take back or resold. And then he brought the legal case that uh, we all say British soil is free, that we don't allow enslavement of black people on British soil. But why is this happening? So they went to, to the courts, they had a lot of legal battles, and then at the end of the day, you had Murray Mansfield proclamation in that era 1772 that okay British soil is not a space for enslavement though you had British colonies still enslaving people right so but you don't do it on this soil right so so you so so with that with that, with that uh, Mansfield proclamation it went worldwide that okay British government said that their space is free so that even opened the eyes of other people that we can rush into England and become free people. Yeah. So you had a lot of black people now from the US, even uh, after the, uh, the, the revolutionary wars that, okay, now we're going into to, to, to Britain, and as we go there, we'll be free. So, 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 so it tells you also the level of migration of black people coming into England, right? And England at the time was not that, was not that kind of welfare state. They can't even take care of themselves. Nonetheless, talking about people coming in. So you, start, you started having what certain historians call as the white man's burden. So the British government started seeing the black man as a burden, right? Socioeconomically, because you had a lot of black people now roaming the streets of London, homeless and everything. So they started trying to look at strategies to see how we can take this burden off our backs. Right? So, 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 so a lot of argument, for instance, Henry Smithman, who had been a, 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 a plant collector and also an entomologist, was sent here by the Kew Garden to come do research. And at the end of the day, he went to Banana Island and other spaces. He made a lot of recommendations to the abolitionists that, uh, I've, I've gone to a space. I've seen a space and I, and I feel that space would be good for people to return to. So if you're going to, to, to say, for instance, to parliament, you can use my research and then posit some arguments for people to come here that you have a space. So that, those, those were also steps that help the abolitionists to say, okay, then we can have a space in, 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 in Sierra Leone. So they started gathering money to see how they can facilitate ships, supply, to see that they, 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 they bring people. So that's how. 419 black people joined by 60 whites came into the location that they refer to as the province of freedom, right? So before even you had what you know as Freetown, it was the province of freedom based on the premise that uh, Granville Sharp now had this one focus that, okay, if you guys want to go to that space, uh, my focus will be trying to draft like a constitution, draft a whole program that black people will lead themselves on a black soil, right? But we all know that didn't happen, right? That didn't happen because even when, uh, so, so basically you see some basic introduction of colonialism, right? Because if you look at all, even, even Afri all of Africa states, you notice that with the press, what, 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 what you know as the presence of full-blown colonialism started as companies. So it's uh, some elements of business. So from 1787, it started uh, when Granville facilitated the guys to come here. So you had this place known as Granville Town or Province of Freedom. 
in respect of Granville, sharp fighting or legal stuff for black people coming here. So they established what they call the St. George's Bay Company, which later became the Sierra Leone Company, right? So, so, so 1787, when you had the first presence of black people. Those, those were the black people that history referred to as black poles, right? Got them at the black poles. These are the first group that came into what you know today as Freetown. Met the Timini Kings on the coast, because this place originally, what you know today as Freetown, the Timini name is Romarong. Romarong. Romarong or Rokiam. Right. Romarong is R O M A R O N G. Right. So that, that's, that, that, that's how they do the place. And then the British came, negotiated with the first captain that came with the, with, with the ship. That the ship this way, I think we have a right to kind of come. The king. Gave, gave them a small plot of land and in, in what you know today as Freetown, they established Granville Town. But two years after the establishment of Granville Town, they, they, they had a lot of scuffles with the Timini Kings. And then this, this place was burned down. Right? So they burned the whole Granville Town. So those that survived shifted east and that was not a full-blown community again. So the British, through the Sierra Leone company, started thinking about, okay, we need more people. We need more people to come really formulate this town again, right? And so, if we, if we read the American independence history or how America became independent or the struggles, there's a whole civil war around that, right? There was a revolutionary war, right? In, um, uh, the, the, the British and what you know as patriots were trying to fight to really free themselves on the new soil because America was a colon, colonial state as well. So what you, what you know as America today started as 13 colonies. These are 13 British colonies, right? So in, 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 in North America. So you started having this struggle. So the British started saying, okay, if you're on the plantations, if you fight for us and we win this war, we are going to take care of you or shift, give you a land that you can use for yourself. Remember that most of the Africans that left here through the transatlantic slave trade, especially for instance, if we look at Bones Island's history, most of these enslaved Africans were Timinis, Limba, Loko, Bulom, Sapes, they all had their own. Uh, knowledge system, right? Basically, one of the greatest things that they took these people for enslavement was because of their expertise in rice growing, right? So that's why you see a lot of black folks, even today, showing DNA traits of uh, connections to Sierra Leone. You still go deep, 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 deep to sea islands of South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and stuff, right? That you now today call the Gola Gichi Cultural Heritage Corridor, right? which African uh, cultural reproduction yes, on the diaspora, right? So thousands of people taken in that location just to grow rice, experiment with indigo and stuff. So it's not just people taking people and shifting them there. They knew what these people were going to produce there, right? So because in those days, Remember, United States was an agrarian society. It depended, it depended on agriculture, right? And who, 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 who had the agricultural knowledge, right? So, 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 for instance, rice alone served the basis for America's GDP. People talk today about Carolina gold. How did rice go to the U.S.? It's simple. Right, it's simple. The first seed of rice that went to the U.S. came from the island of Madagascar. How did it go there? A, a, a slave merchants went there to trade. The ship had a problem, and they mended the ship on that side. And what did he pay with? He gave them rice, seeds of rice. It was those seeds that our uh, botanists there experimented, and they started seeing it grow into a gold, green gold, like you say green gold, which is rice, and then everybody was, okay, 
I think we can come to the rice coast, which is Senegal, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea. We can come there and we can get black people and then bring them here and then they can share these expertise with us. So, so after the, the you, so you had black people fighting on the side of the British that they referred to as black loyalists during the war, the American Revolutionary War. So after the war, these people were shipped into Nova Scotia or Canada, so places like Halifax, these, they, 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 they went to that location, right? And that's how even the Book of Negroes came about. So if you hear about Book of Negroes, because Book of Negroes is just trying to say that these were the Negroes that were documented on this side to be taken into uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. But we all know one of the reasons that they, they wanted to take them to Canada was to give them, they said, viable land, right? Who grows, who grow rice and ice? Nobody, right? right? right. So, so, so basically, the black people as well saw it as a failed promise. So in Nova Scotia as well, you, you, had, you started having a lot of agitation, a lot of agitation. Black leaders like Thomas, uh, Thomas Peters started uh, petitioning the British government, he even came down to England, petition and stuff, so that, say, we don't want to be here. This place can, can, can support us as black people with what, with what we have as a knowledge system. We've, we know we've heard about the place that our brothers went, take us there. Take us there. So that's how 1792 this place became Freetown. When they came down to this place, they named the location, okay, this is Freetown. That's how the name Freetown really came about. As a, I would say a rebaptism of Granville Town, province of freedom, Granville uh, and, and stuff. So this place became Freetown itself. So you had over 1,000 black people coming, and you had a captain, Claxon coming with them. So they all had this idea, even Will uh, Thomas and the other black people had this idea, okay, we are coming to a land that black people will be free and lead themselves, which is like independent black states, right? In 1792, we have an independent black state. So they came with those uh, uh, folks, and at the end of the day, the captain that came with those folks became the first governor of Freetown. So you, you had a lot of agitation again on the soil because black people, leaders like Thomas Peter has felt betrayed. He was British. Who? Thomas Peter. No, no he, he was, was a black people, black, black man. Uh, yeah, so he had fought as, on the side, yeah, he had, he had fought on the side of the British during the American Revolutionary War. Okay. Okay. So he came, he came back with, a, so basically, yeah. that's a whole lot of African Americans coming on the soil in 1792. Okay. Those are the ones that came with Paul Cuff. Paul Cuff. No, Paul, Paul, Paul Cuff, Paul Cuff, Paul Cuff led the American Colonization Society. So Paul Cuff came with people before you had the foundation of Liberia today, right? So when um, the American Colonization Society was thinking about bringing people here as African Americans, right, after slavery, blah, blah, blah. Even with Paul Cove had a lot of issues. So he's connected a lot, a lot of issues connecting with African colonization society, but Paul Cove was also in disagreement with a lot of issues with the African colonization society. So when he, Paul Cove had had connection with a Sierranian brother, as well, who had fought on the side of the British and came as well in 1792. So Cove's engagement with the colony was in the 1780s. Right, so he 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 he, he brought at least I'll say 20, first 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 group would have been 20 that he had started business network here yeah, because Parkoff was a rich black person, right? Shipbuilder. Yeah, so so he had his own ship and stuff, and he had he has connected with uh, another Sierranian brother on the Shabro River, right? Who also was enslaved. He he he, he served as a black loyalist came down to Nova Scotia and came back. So a small boy caught here, enslaved, taken on that side, being in the plantation, became a soldier, went to Nova Scotia and he turned back to Sierra Leone. So basically, this, 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 this will be somebody that will give you an empirical evidence of the transatlantic slave trade. 
because he he did everything around the circles. Yeah, he lived everything and came back to the motherland, right? So that's how Kof facilitated the first group to come here. They went to the Shabu River because of the place with a lot of mosquitoes. These were the, the first black people that the American colonization society led through Kof. Most of them were dying and they moved up river. So the place now you call Liberia. So this was the group that formed Liberia. There will, there will not have been Liberia as the first demo, uh, republic on the continent without passing through Sierra Leone. Because they never wanted to go to that location. It was, Sierra Leone was the present. But because they were dying in that location, so they moved upward, the Galinez River. So remember that it, is, it was colonialism that gave you boundaries of Sierra Leone and Liberia. But almost all of these people were the same. So these were the group that, that went there and later, they started sending people to what you know today as Monrovia becoming the first black republic. Right? So this is just a short history of Freetown via Sierra Leone. So we'll go into the museum, just spend a little bit of time and then we'll walk through some of the landscapes I'll show you across the historic city of Freetown. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Freetown Sierra Leone and you most welcome to your motherland. You're no longer a foreigner but fellow citizen and you're here to know who you are, to identify yourself. This is Gallery 1, that is Gallery 2. Shall we please come in? In Gallery 1 we have permanent exhibition on our culture and traditional heritage and that is the brain behind the museum and also the brain behind the Monumental Relics Commission. That is Dr. Mokumok Chasparerismo. He was a medical doctor, a gynecologist, deeply interested in culture. He stood firm to see that in 1946-47, Sierra Leone does have to prevent their monumental and relics in Sierra Leone through the bylaw that was passed and became an act in parliament in 1946-47. And he was the first curator of the Sierra Leone National Museum. He became the first creator on the 10th December 1957. That's the establishment of the museum. In here is just orientation on the reception area. That's an outreach program that will be done to the school in order for them to restore their arts and cultural center. They have a corner normally at the school because normally they ask them, go with your art and craft exhibit. They will go with toilet roll and English soap. So we stopped that and we said no local content needs to be introduced back. Thank God for the Minister of Basic Education that have already introduced it in the syllabus. That is Animal Kingdom. We look at when the kindergartens are here, we talk about the wild animal as well as the domestic one. And due to the beautiful Atlantic Ocean being the first and famous largest natural arbor in Sierra Leone, we have some seafoods that we do exhibit. As you can see, and the connection between Sierra Leone and Nigeria, we do have it due to the traditional dancers of the or the or the, or the Ogugu society. This is a society that is introduced by the Yoruba people, and we have indigenous of them here in Sierra Leone as a result of the recaptives after the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. There was this court of mixed commission exhibited or established within the headquarters and also between the English, the Portugal, the French and others that those slave traders that will cut the dice of the sea taking slave to Europe America will be recaptured and go through uh, uh, go through a criteria of indictment through the commission of the mixed commission which was established just at the, at, at adjacent to us here at the post office in Shek and Stephen that was where the building was established if you go down a little, just about four yards or three yards off here, you will see that specimen. Now we can enter here, please. I only have 20 minutes, so I need to make use of it. It has already, um, the history has already been digested by Pamumu. And does this symbolize the beautiful landscape of the Lion Mountain, lies slowly within West Africa, as a small dot with 6.5 populace. Very tolerant in terms of religious aspects and so on. 
we have about 16 ethnic groups. Some philosophers said, historians said we have 18, others said 24. Presently, actively participating, we just have 12 ethnic groups. We have one of the largest ethnic groups in Sierra Leone, which is the Temine. They came from Futa Jalo. They were the indigenous here in Sierra Leone when, in 1462, Pentecostal Center was on the voyage to West Indies. He passed through, he met them here. Interestingly, the name has already been said by Pamomo that Sierra Leone was known as Woman Rome, meaning place of the whalers, as a result of the waves. The Atlantic, the river, the streams, when they come together, the splash. That's the sound, and that was the same scenario that Pedroda Center gave the name Sierra Loa. As a result of the thunder and lightning, it was during the rainy season. There was heavy storm. So it's like, I don't want to go into what he has already said. I'm just giving you the background of why it happened this way. So that is it I'm saying now, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that, the, the, it rhymed. The storm and that of the heavy rain and then the splash, everything rhymed together. Roman Rome, it was done, it was given by the Timini. Then we had the indigenous here. Many Rodoka. Sometimes you hear the Timini say, Robadoka, Robadoka, meaning I am going to Frita. That's the meaning of faith, yeah? So these people, the Ariobo Pabs just get rid of notorious criminals and witches. In those days, one of the highlights of how do they enslave you human beings as a result of, if there is among the family also, a witch is being identified there, the whole family become a slave in Africa. That is, you have to work for the elders, maybe the parliament chief or the king, or maybe the, the, the spokesman or whoever that have authority in that community, you have to work for that person. In his or her farm, yeah, so that is it. And then again, if you are in debt, you cannot pay your fine at a specific time frame that you have already highlighted. You become a, 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 a slave to that individual. Yes, yes. So that is it. And this was as a result of the 11 year brutal war in Sierra Leone. We have indigenous like the civil defense force that decided to fight against the rebel because uh, the war like is a senseless war. So they had to fight against the rebel to stop them that what they are doing is wrong. We are harming each other. So we need to stop it. So you have as you know, Northwest, you have the Capras and the Camajo. The Southeast, you have the, the Northwest, you have the Capras and the Tamaros. The Southeast, you have the Camajos. So the Camajos had to go through some of the attraction schools of thought, like the Wendy Society and Brown Society, in order to fortify themselves as a bulletproof. That's when you send in the bullet, it will be resisted. And that's how they wear those gum. You can see the gum over there. And also you can see the elements, the cap, the necklace, and that of the chap. Interestingly, those tied wraps with cords are just Arabic recitation. There's nothing in it, just Arabic recitation. If you undo it, you see the Arabic paper with the recitation. That is a section in some of the Asura to protect themselves. Yeah. That is it. And then this belongs to the Mende ethnic group. You have them from, it's as a result of the money invasion they came here. So it's like, these people, when you go deep history, they are from Southern Sudan, all the way to Mali. They said to them, they are fighting for Queen Tensity. And they find themselves in Guinea, from Guinea to Liberia, like Liberia, they are known as the Vibe. They came to Sierra Leone, they have divisions. You have the corner, you have the Mende, Mende divided into three categories and all these things. And they, they are very they, they are very unique. They have a very unique culture. You have the Yavi being a social dancer, especially for the women. You have the go boy for the elders, the age women. You have um, Jobai for the youth. The kids, like when they want to send them to the traditional schools of thought in order to initiate them in the forest. When they are lack of food, they normally use the family to build a masquerade. One will be dancing while they demonstrating and fetch some money and buy food and go back. That's it. And then you have the hunting society. This is as a result of the liberation and the recaptives and free slaves, the settlers. Like you already mentioned in 1787, the first settlers arrived, the Nova Scotians. These were slaves sold by the British to the Americans doing the American War of Independence, they connive with them to bully the Americans, whether they win or not, they will give them a free land on their home. And so that's exactly what happened. And so after the war, America won the war. After that, they took them to Nova Scotia. And some of them had to boycott because they won their freedom due to overpopulist 
poor economy, outbreak of diseases in Nova Scotia. Some of them find their way through to England in order to fight for their freedom. The other came about the Mets, Gavin Sharp, William Weaverforce, even Andrew Filma, who was a fly catcher here in Sierra Leone, he was under a specimen looking at those butterflies. He situated at Banana Highland, as he made mention. Yeah? So that is it. So when they came, when these settlers arrived, they formed a very unique culture known as the hunting dog society. That is the hunting society. It is very, very ceremonious. You only see them when a member of them want to get married, or maybe one of them passed away. And they have a special day that they call Ogun Day, in order for them to celebrate. Yeah, that is their mask over there, the one with the crocodile head. <coughs> That's yeah, Yoruba. That's Yoruba. Oh. Yes. That's Yoruba. That's attached from the Yoruba. Yeah, they, they are always uniform. They are always yeah. uniform. In fact, before ever they dance to whatever they want to dance, they have to feel the atomy first. So they feast, they go to the bush, they hunt it. But due to ecotourism law, it's no longer allowed killing animals in the forest. So they do that or they buy uh, a good number of food like meat, cow meat, and all these things. They would make a big cook. All of them, they eat like an African. All of them in one basin. The, the arm, yeah, in one basin. After that, they wash their hand in a bowl and they wipe it on their clothes. And then they begin their celebration. That's how they do it. And then you also have the Mama Dora, the Payengima. These are from the Shabu Island. Mama Dora is a mammy spirit that lives in sea. But it's very useful to the fishermen. Sometimes our people are farming in the area of fishing. They go to the sea, they don't catch no fish and all these things. If, to, if it happens for a week, they have to go through the ceremony. They use virgins to appease the gods. They will make a feast. The house, the community will make a feast. And then the best food they have to put in the traditional, either the pottery pot or the calabash. And then they give these three virgins with white apparel, take it right at the midst of the sea, and then they, set, they, they pour it in the water, they appease the God. And within three days' time, the spirit will pass. That is to say they are pleasing, so they will begin to catch fish. But sometimes they use a week to feast upon those fish, those fishes. So after that, then, then they sell. You have Papa, Mama Para. Mama Para is from the Mende, Mende, Kisi, and Loko tribe. You have triplets or twins or couplets. They are the ones that always dance to Mama Para. They dress like a woman, stand up on top of a stick, and then they celebrate. Due to a well, the Atlantic, the river, and so on and so forth, we have also a mammoth spirit that does exist within the vicinity of Sierra Leone boundary. They call it Mami Water. It always comes in three forms, either with a human head, fish, or snake, or two heads, and then all those things. So that is it. And this is the Bambani figure. This Bambani figure came is, is as a result of the Limba society. The Limba ethnic group, they have a traditional society like this known as the Bambani figure. This is where the elders, the royal, if you want to be in the royal throne, you have to go through the cancer society. The Limba ethnic group, these, these, are, these are the people that are indigenous in this land. The Limba and the Bulo. The others are migrants. Okay. Yeah. The Limba we are found in Horawa Mountain, known as the Bintumani Mountain, and all this thing. This is a country stock used to punish slaves in those days, and men that commit women crime in fornication and adultery. We also have here our tradition. I only allow you. I don't allow phones. I only allow him because he's a, yeah. Traditional musical instrument. That is it. I know that is the main reason why he doesn't want me to do his talk because I don't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> this is full of guitars. Wow, that's that you. looks like him. That's you, Francois. Francois. Oh yeah. my God. Yep. Make sure you get that. This, this, oh we call God. this one Balanji. It's a new phone. It gives the. It gives them the line of do re mi so la ti da the musical line. Yeah. Okay. So our people can play it. I don't know how to play it. It all it all it belongs to the Soso Madinka. Yeah. They know how to play it. You have Bata, you have you have Kele when Kele was to the female traditional schools of thought, which is a Bondu society. It was established as a result of they don't allow the girl child to go to school in those days. Previously it was not allowed at all in Africa. 
So it's like an institution that our people establish for at least two to three years, giving orientation in the area of moral ethics, domestically, how you can be more equipped, and then how you can stand as a woman. Because the women, did these were the breadwinner in those days. That's why men married one or five, four, six wives to one man, because these women are the breadwinners. They will go to the farm, they will have to remove the grass, do a lot of things, selling off, um, um, objectives and all these things, and carry their baby, taking care of their baby, and they have to go into competition in order for who and who we take the man for the night. So you have to appease it the best way. So, and then, so after that, that's how the FGM introduced the female genetically circumcision process. That's how it was introduced. And this is a bond to society. The men, they call it the Sandy Society. The other ethnic group, it cuts across all ethnic groups in Sierra Leone. The only ethnic group that we were not participant previously when they arrived was the settlers. But later, because of intermarriages, they have to. So if you want to get a native man as a Creole, obviously the native man wants what wants for you to do. You have to do it, you have to suck up to it. So that's exactly what happened. Well, we have two scenarios about it. You have a specific school of thought that said it is very useful. Another one said it is harmful, and that is the international war. Some Africans are saying it does not, it does not harm me, so why should I not belong, or my children will not belong. A specific example is our first lady. Yes, and then she said, I'm proud I will take my children to eat, because it does not harm her. Okay, so, so, so that is it. Each of the subjects does have a criteria to play in that school of thought. They all have their responsibility. Yeah? So, and then this also is a musical in instrument. Some of our music is belonging to some of the ethnic groups, like you have the local one. And also you have for the kisi that they use. This is one of our natural fabric in Sierra Leone, country cloth. Yeah. It is natural. In those days, it's only the elite or prominent people in society that use it. But 2012, by the former president, it calls Sierra Leoneans and it motivates Sierra Leoneans because of the passion that he has for Africa and Sierra Leoneans culture. He said to Sierra Leoneans, make sure you always put on your cultural attire. So it's cut now across. Everybody wants to showcase his or her culture. So that's how it came to existence. This is for society. It belongs to the Timini ethnic group. It's for the women. This is where they have a caucus in order how to deal with their husbands. Yeah. And then this is an exhibit that does entertain. Gongoli is there to entertain you, appease you all the day long. If you have sadness or whatever happened, he's a guy that speaks different type of jargon. He's an orator. You have some of the masks here, please. I'm sorry, sir. I'll soon finish. This is Matoma from the Limba. Odele falls under the categories of series of uh, um, social dancers like the Padu, the Bloody Mary, the Tetina. They all fall under Odele. Odele. This is uh, a masquerade that normally overgarnish himself. They always behave like the ladies. You know, the ladies want to sell out the beauty, so they have to have another baby. So that is it. Chaos is not something sacred is a money that you carry on. Today we're using it as a fashion. Yeah, that is it. This one is ceremony that already talk about. This is the leader for the female traditional schools of thought, the Bundu Society. And these ones belong to the men, the ethnic group. The Falwi. Falwi is a warrior. He had to lose one of his hands right at the war front. And so he came back to the city and said, no, I need to appease myself. So he's always there to joke with the kids. The kids will be singing around him. He will keep telling stories, telling, you know, historical, expressing historical poem and all these things. And this is a foreigner for this. Napali is a foreigner for good boy. This is for the young boys. This is for the age of women. Before ever their grandfather comes out, the, the young boys will come out first spiritually, a piece of the area, and then they call their grandfather. Daddy, it's time, grandfather, it's time for you to come out. That's how it is. It's also ceremonial. Presently, we have 190 chief dom in Sierra Leone, 16 ethnic group, and then four regions. And we have a specimen of few of the parliament chiefs. 
Well, even as my brother has all, already digested it, it was during the colony that Sierra Leone became constituency, started becoming constituency, chiefdom oriented and all these things. But previously, before the transatlantic slave trade, it was a kingdom. Africa was having a series of kingdoms. Like Sierra Leone was divided into four kingdoms. Even when the settlers arrived, they were fortunate to make kings. That um, what would I they list the land? They did not sell the land. This was where this conflict started. The land was not sold, but after the, the king that leased the land to them passed away, which is King Nibana, King King Tom took over, they refused to pay treaty. You had the conflict between the Timini and that of the, the settlers, the Gravin Town, and then the French came in in 1709 and bought that, they burnt down the Gravin Town eventually. And then you have, they were fortunate to rebuild it again. And fortunately, when the Timini penetrated, it's as a result of that that they built the, 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 the Matolo Tower in order to fortify themselves. And then you have the fort which they fortified, the government house. If you go there now, like status, you will see the fort, the, the, the foundation of the, the fortification of the Fort Stunty and all those things. And so these are now the parliament chiefs. We have 190 chiefs done. Um, on, more, on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, we're going to exhibit newly appointed parliament chiefs that we are fortunate to pay the visit to the British High Commissioner, about 24 of them and so. It has been done by His Excellency Congra by Peter Penford. He's the one that is going to come and exhibit them here tomorrow. So you have them at gallery too, yeah? These are just few specimens of our timbers. And then you have where you can relax yourself. Natural breeze is like seesaw. That is a mock. You have a, you have a, a, a lamp, a train lamp. This building was used as a railway station. This building is a monument in Sri Lanka. It was once a railway station, a school room, a mirror water factory, a telephone station. That eventually became a national museum. Here comes the war bell that normally alerts the settlers to fight against their enemies. Yeah, and these are gifts that was given to the first prime minister of Sri Lanka, These are black magic. Some of them are halves. They use it as medication. Some they use it against their enemies. When things, they say, no, I cannot swallow it anymore. I need to do something. So they use it. And then you have the Madinga natural ladder from the skin of animals. Yeah, so good so that in gallery two, I will not talk much. Okay. You just go around. Yeah. Okay. This is a substance figure. It fall. Um, it we can trace up all the way to the prehistoric time, prehistoric period time when man started development. That's how we trace the roots to it. And then you have the two stones using it for fire. Man was living in Romit, not only in Africa but all over the world, as creation was said it. Man used raw food, eat raw food, but they still survive until they discover fire through stones, until they discover metal, yeah? But those people, they are very, very unique. They have series of talents. And so our people, God used them to recreate the memorial land of those when they're gone. Because their faith was, if you died, they said your body has gone back where they came from, but the spirit does exist among them. And so if you are talented oriented, they will have to carve stones. And these stones will stand as a memorial for you, a memory for you. They'll place it in isolated area, they call it Holy Land. If you go to East Africa, you have a lot of them here. A lot of them there when you get to East Africa. Even in West Africa, even in Mali, you have it there. And so, so these stones are known, they are rice fertility figures, they are fertilizers. We call them normally here. And the many people call them my feminist and uh, chief spirit. They've been in existence for over 17 years. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have told. <coughs> they we are using their rice farm. This is one of the skills the craftiness of the Africans, used in their rice farm for good crops. It gives them good crops, <coughs> rice plantation, sugar plantation, and even a woman that cannot give bad, it gives fertility. That's how they pass the ceremony. This is also a natural fabric. We call it raffia. And then we also have awari. Awari cuts across Africa. 
It's a game normally played by the men. They've been gambling themselves. It's like casino when they played it. Yeah? This um, type of faris, it does this traditional masquerade exist in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ghana, Nigeria, the Gambia, etc. It's also very unique. They, they normally we have two types of it. This belongs to the Mende and the Limba ethnic group. This belongs to the Kisi tribe. They call it Porta. The Kisi came into Sierra Leone as a result of his search of salt water to extract salt. That's how they find themselves here. We have potteries that have been in existence for over 17,000 and 2,000 years. Sorry, over 2,000 years. We have a local refrigerator that you find all over when you go to the provincial town. This is a local refrigerator. We call it a uh, country port. It's chill your water. I do believe some of the uh, chalet that is built within the peninsula, so they do have it. They made a metal or clay? It's a clay. It's made out of clay, yes. Okay. These are some of our domestic items. Domestic items. This is a chair that is normally used in the farmhouse. After they've done their family, they sit here and relax. And this is for the gossips. Those that they want them to confess. Confess. What did you guys say? Say it out. Gossip bench. So we can go to the next gallery. So sorry. So sorry. You are come to Gallery 2. In here we have central exhibition. Okay. Uh, we need to wait for the examination. Which is the copyright. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Copyright. Yeah. Okay. You spent seven years if you copyright. Okay. You see? Ah. So yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. that building which is Gallery 2, it was established on the 16th May 1987. It's commemorating the 200 year celebration of the settlers that came to Sierra Leone. Yeah, from Nova Scotia and from England, the Black Folk. In here presently, we have an exhibition that talks about the First and Second World War. That is an old map when we were having 149 chiefdom. Presently, it's 190 now. That's the old map there. And so we're looking at Commonwealth War Great Commission exhibit in collaboration with Sierra Leone National Museum exhibit the cops carriers. These were carriers, they were like porters, helping the contingents to take their weapons from one position to another, and those that will be victim of death, take, taking the remains somewhere else, and even feeding and all these things. Well, they were volunteers. They would normally volunteer to the parliament chiefs in those days. The parliament chief recommend them to the um, 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 colony, uh, um, 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 military in order for them to approve them and then they send them out. Interestingly, they are not data, they are not data literally. So it's like they are trying to do a program like this in West Africa in order to see how best they can tally now. So they're looking at their people who would be there to still reflect and remember that my brother or my husband or my father or my grandfather was once part of them. So you have the website where you fill in the form and you indicate the names of them all this thing. But they've got over um, 950 and above thousands of people who are filling those forms. You have the Book of Memorial, which is this. This is the Book of Remembrance. That is it in the case. You can flip it. Majority of them from Sierra Leone, we are from the southeastern part of Sierra Leone. And these, we are the Mende people who volunteered to do that. Yeah? So this is the exhibition. You have an explode bomb, which was um, exploded in the Second World War. That is it. The first gun point for the Second World War that started in 1945 was done, was took from West Africa, and that is Togo. The last gun point was took in East Africa, and that is Kenya. That is an explode bomb. This was just an album of them. We are in the, we are in the war front and all these things. And then you also have, these were their files. These were correspondent as well as newspaper. You have uh, a combat who was a lad. We are fortunate to have him from his wife. But she's not very old. It's the grandson that came with him. These are some of the weapons that they use. And then we have a lighthouse, a light reflector being used, operated by magnet. This was used in those days. It was like up, like cape house. 
in Aberdeen to protect sheep when they want to anchor so that they can anchor safely. That's exactly what the lighters will do. And this is a modern day Bonds Island. Bonds Island, I don't believe you'll be going there. There we trace. There, there is a place where it's three sleep. It's three sleep. So when you get there, it will wake up. And then you'll feel the presence. It's not exaggeration. You feel it. That a lot of spirit was weeping in that place. Yeah, in 1600, 1662, it was established again, rebuilt by Benz, a merchant, a great merchant in England. He built it, and then there was a conflict between them by the, the Dutch people. Interestingly, they were always infighting, infighting the French, the Dutch, the Portugal, the English, and so on and so forth. They were infighting. In 1664, it was destroyed and then rebuilt where it is today at the river, the Bonds River itself. Eventually, the island took the name of the river instead of the name of the uh, 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 Machia who built it. It was, It's supposed to be Benz Island, B-N-C-E. But today, it is Bonds Island due to the indigenous and the river, B-U-N-C-E. Yeah, I won't say much on it because I do believe somebody's going to give you a tour there. Are you taking them there? We should be going. Okay. Now we go to a different. Okay. Uh, this is just yeah, a sketch of how the first settlers arrived in Nova Scotia. And this is a country tree, the famous and beautiful cultural landscape being in existence over 500 years, beautifying the city, protecting the city. It was a meeting house, it was an auction point, and then later a settlement point. The, like the second settlers who arrived in 1792, the Black Poor, among them you have Thomas Peters, who was also a victim that ran away from his, his servant and had to find his way through to fight out. He, he has already made mention of James Somerset, he has made mention of the Amistad Revolt in, in 1939, 53 of them from those parts of West Africa onto Havana, Cuba, they had to revolt and all these things, find themselves in Connecticut. Interestingly, African American stood, Adam stood to fighting their justice. And 39 of them were sent back to Africa and all these things. And here you see Thomas Peters, after they sang the song, Anson Sinner Zone, he stood and gave the name Frita. He was the one Thomas Peters gave that name, Frita, meaning any slave that step is off it in the soil, is a free man. Yeah? And then you have pioneers of the brain of Africa, how Africa should unite. Pan-African organization, yeah. And then we in here, I'm so sorry I'm exhausted the time. Gentleman who said no to certain policy that was done by the colonialists, especially the Odd Tax War. By Bure, he fought the Odd Tax War in 1898. He goes to war. By Bure was a great fighter. His nickname, when he's fighting, is known, is known as Kabila, meaning a stone. You cannot easily penetrate to a stone except to use a machine. And he was a great, he was a great magician. He can appear, disappear, and all these things. He was the paramount chief by then in Kasi village, Potloko district. Yeah, he had to go to war. He, uh, he, always, he surrendered himself. I always had people say that by Bure surrender himself. He surrendered himself in for the interest of his people. That's why he surrendered himself. Because the breaches have already, police have already penetrated, killing his people. So he had to make himself known so that they would know that this is the actual Bible. Because it was very difficult for them to identify the Bible. You will see one face in 10 individuals, you don't know the right person. That is how he fought and with his voice. So he surrendered himself. He was here first in Freetown on the house arrest at 34. And later on, they took him to. Gold Coast at Komasi, there he was. Why? In Komasi, Nigeria, Ghana, the Gambia, they were also fighting for the same purpose, the hot tax war. So in, 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 in Ghana, they had to apprehend Kim Prem Prem and came with him here. He was here in house arrest. And then the lady who was so vibrant and determined to protect the golden stool, who is Asantua. Yeah. She had to stool farm, and she's the one that killed the governor yes. by then, mm -hmm. who was Charles Makati. Yes. And so they see themselves through, find where pay, they return him back. But the two had to pass away, like King Yangwa and King Paka, because it was three of them that they took from here to, to Ghana. 
And this is the father of independence, Samuel Smogai. He gave us our independence, 27 April 1961. Yeah. And then we also have, we have memories of great merchant in Kono, that is the part of Serelio, Chief Manisudu. And then we also have a great king also, whose name was given to a whole district, Kailam district, King Kailundu. He took English education to Kailam. He was a brave man. He also, he also prevented his, his, his family or his indigenous from outbreak diseases that will eventually kill them, like smallpox and etc. This is a war gun that is used by the Northern elders, the Brahmin chiefs and kings. And this is the first female Brahmin chiefs in Sierra Leone. She came from the southern part of Sierra Leone, Mama district. Madame Yoko, she took over after the death of her husband. She was the, well, our people say she was sort of a betrayal during the attacks war. So interestingly, what happened was, we made to a conclusion that they said she committed suicide. I do believe that they killed her because of she was passing message to the whites, to the witches people. And then she is the one who stood in order for the female traditional schools of Todi Bundu society to be legalized. She was using also that bush to appease the white people. The beautiful kids that will come out from it, she will hand them over to the white people as their husbands and all these things. Yeah. She had a very interesting story. But we have a book that talks about the history of Sierra that will really answer a lot of questions if you buy it. This is the whole form of currencies. These are these ones I used during the battle system, and these when we be, we started executive presidency, one party system up to democracy. This one has been used, and today we have different one that is used. The short travel, right, of the National Museum in in, in Freetown. So for for us conservators, mostly we say museums are the body of a nation, right. So the soul of the nation is within the museum. If you go to any space and you want to understand that space better, it is critical that you take some steps around the museum and understand the, the nation's journey somehow. I know we all have got so a glimpse of that. But as we talk about Freetown, you can't divorce Freetown history without what you refer to as the first back to Africa movement. Right? So the first to a back to Africa movement that we see evolve even in the days of Marcos Garvey and other people. It's, it's to tell you that there are, there are people over time that are always look towards back to Africa, right? And which is like, this is the same thing you're doing in modern times, right? Because of that resonance, because of that consciousness that we, we are here today on the other side of the sea but we have a root and where is that root the root is the mother continent it's in africa so over time you still see and it's, it's not going to end in our time you still see generations who, who still look towards africa right towards africa so and and in the composition of free time you still have a lot of groups so we're talking about the Black Pearl first group, we're talking about the Nova Scotian second group, we're talking about the Maroons third group, we're talking about the liberated Africans who are the vast majority of that, those groups forming the third or last group, meeting with their indigenous brothers and sisters on the soil and then got a community, produce what you know today as Freetown community, right? It's the same thing that you saw Paul Koff in, on, on his December 10th journey in 1815, bringing 38 people to this space. 20 of those people that he brought were all children. All children, 20. So, 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 so we're looking at the age range of six months, kids, up to 60 years, people. So, so, so if you have kids as, as little as six months, 
and so it tells you the level of production over time of those kids and what they created in societies like you so that, that we say Liberia today or some in Sierra Leone. Let's walk, we're going to walk through Maroon Town. All of this area now is Maroon Town. When the Maroons came in 1800, they established themselves within these borders. Right, so from Walpole Street, going down to spaces like Kintom today was all Maroon Village or Maroon Town.